especially if you do them all the time, you, you come separate from, it's like it's two identities. One's like you with your body weight. Another one is you with your giant bands. This one feels better. So you, you know, you put it forward. I'm sure that many of you remember David from his early YouTube videos. In any case, I thought it was an amazing idea to make an interview and a discussion with him because his advice actually does work. I can say that from experience. He has had a huge contribution to my strength level and I'm sure that many of you would enjoy this interview. But I apologize in advance because I have never done this, you know, an interview and neither did he. So I completely skipped the formalities, you know, the introduction, the ending and stuff. But yeah, in any case, enjoy. Why did you start calisthenics? Uh, I first got into calisthenics because I had this little Indian friend, Kastub, who you, some some might remember from my um, early YouTube videos. Uh, he got me into it. He said I had a lot of potential. And so I started like falling under his wing. And then after that, I started watching all the YouTube videos, you know, Yuri, Bash, then I found Bashmakov. I was looking at all the, you know, the hardest elements. And yeah, just from then on, I just got hooked on it. I was like, damn, I'm making quick progress. All my friends at lunch and recess and during high school, um, yeah, they loved it. And we all, every, every recess and lunch, we're just training and training and training, hanging out after school training. So yeah, that's how it, that's how it all began. So skills from the start, no basics, no, no nothing. You know, I, I was really good at pull-ups and push-ups just from like, you know, year eight when i was 14 15 I had, I had you know a base but so in the next question why were you so systematic you know because you're known for your um, systematic approach on your youtube your old tutorials and stuff so why were you so systematic when it comes to the training oh that's interesting um interesting question because when i watched a lot of youtube tutorials everything seemed all over the place like I, I I couldn't yeah I couldn't understand how to structure my own trainings and everything was everyone was always contradicting each other, so I was like okay I have to create a plan if I'm gonna you know achieve this goal and so um, you know I was watching Brandon Win he was actually one of my biggest um, you know sources of knowledge from the beginning and yeah so I, I copied off of him for a bit then I look at Marku Vatila I look at all these you know really strong guys. And that helped me, um, you know, create a structure, create a plan. And then oh, I don't know how, yeah, I just, I guess that's just the way I am. I like to have, you know, a very specific, um, yeah, specific goal, specific timeline, everything just to be, I don't know, it's just my, the way my brain works, I guess. I can't just go in there and randomly train and be like, I hope I progress or I hope I need to, you know, see it on paper and be like, oh. all right, I know what I'm doing. You know? So it's just who you are. I think so. Yeah. You have everything on paper. You can't, you can't really. <laughs> yeah. I, I always used to bring my, my um, notepad to the gym <laughs> and it's, like, I had this little notepad and then I saw this mate after a year at the gym. He's like, Hey, it's, it's you. I remember you, you're the guy with the notepad. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> the guy with the notepad. <laughs> nice. So, um, about your training, how would you go from, let's say zero to the front lever because you went straight to the skills. So how did you do it? How would you do it now? Hmm. Okay. So my way, I, some, yeah, some might remember, but, but I always used to, um, try front. I was attempting front lever, attempting it and my arms were always bent, but I could, I had the core strength to be able to, you know, to hold myself out. And I would not recommend just attempts, 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 cause you need you know, that basic pulling strength, which I sort of did and sort of didn't have. It was all biceps and not so much lats. So how I would recommend it is go for weighted pull-ups, aim for about 50% of your body weight and shoot for about five reps. So if you're say 75 kilograms, if you can, if you can do 40 kilogram pull weighted pull-ups for about three to five reps, I, I can almost guarantee you can do a front lever for two seconds, even if you're hips are sagging a bit you have enough strength to do it for straight away because mm -hmm. I've, I've coached like maybe 10 that did not have a front lever bang got the 40 kg pull-ups for reps and mm -hmm. they had their front lever for a few seconds and then I, I made sure that they didn't um go off and you know start using all the heavy bands and start doing all those rep you know front lever pull-ups and stuff because then yeah. you know stuck on the old bands you know we know that story um yeah, so once they have that front lever for two seconds from the weighted pull-up base, then they start doing the raises. 
front lever to inverted hang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then... that's the that's the best way I think. And then, then or to to progress even further, yeah, you need to have a base. You need to have a front lever, uh, straight arm front lever base. So, I always said to you, uh, six to eight front lever pulls was yeah. the the minimum. I, or that's actually what Evo, you know, Penacchioni, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The master, yeah, yeah. That's what he got me to do. And I was like, damn! As soon as I as soon as I hit that um, so... you know, that that level, I could start doing front lever pull ups without even um, you know, training it. So it was actually his his idea, not yours originally. Yeah, exactly. It was his idea. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's something that you invented, like you know. Well, it's. I it don't sounds, know about that. It sounds so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds very um, illogical. You know, six front lever pulls. That's you know oddly specific, right? For the front lever pull ups. So even when I said that on the on the, in my YouTube video, I got a lot of uh, critique for that. You know, mm. that's not how it works. You can't really do that. That's not specificity, but it it works for me. So, why why the pools? Can you explain it a little bit further? Okay. So, well, if you want, if you want to think about, um, uh, let's see, planche push ups. This is a very good example that a lot of people can um, they'll, they'll probably notice that is when somebody cannot hold a full planche, they'll and they start trying to do planche push ups. They'll start bobbing. And they can't lock out. They as soon as they try to lock out, the whole body will rotate yeah. sideways. So be, to be able to push out of a position, you need to be able to hold that position, right? So that's like a it's a step below being able to lift your whole body out of, you know, to lock out. You need to be able to lock out. You know, you need to be able to hold that lock, which is, you know, holding the actual element, plant your front lever. So a bent yeah um, a bent dynamic is. Um, yeah, being able to hold the movement isn't a prerequisite. You have to be able to hold that movement before you start training the bent dynamic. So you need to have that front lever down. You need to have the planche down so that you can push out or pull up. And like, if you, how do I say it? Like if you're doing a front lever pull up and I, I try to, as soon as I try to pull up my hip to the bar, I come down. As soon as I try to lock, boom, I'll just, I'll just fall down. Right. Cause yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. lock, hold it. Yeah. Is more better in terms of seconds of the isometric. And why, why not just train the isometric? Why go for the dy dynamic version? So why not just train the hold instead of pulls? Well, you can, but it's quite boring. And it's easier to measure your progress, you know, with, um, cause like you have to record every set if you're doing isometrics, right? Because you don't know exactly how long you're holding. Cause when you know, you're doing a front lever, it could be one, two, three, four, oh, you know, that's actually two seconds, not four seconds. Or then, you know, you can just, you know, count a rep, bang, that's a rep, two, bang. You don't have to keep, you know, recording every little thing. Otherwise, it's just hard to progress. It's boring. And I think there's a better stimulus from your yeah, dynamics than yeah, pure stuff. Yeah. Right? I get nice, nice answer. So um, what method would you use to increase the amount of, let's say, repetitions? So you are starting with, let's say, sets of one front lever pulls. Mm -hmm. How would you build yep. it up to six? Okay. First thing I would do would, um, I would be doing, I would increase my sets. So I'll do, you know, sets of one rep, say if I'm doing five sets of one rep, um, you know, I'd get to 10 with say one and a half minute rest. Maybe I'll go up to 15 sets of one, right? This is progressing like week to week. And then I would decrease my rest period down to cut it off by 30 seconds or, you know, from a minute and a half to a minute or even like, you know, 45 right. seconds, 30 seconds. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, before I know it, I'll have, um, uh, two sets of two reps and then I'll do half two reps and one rep, and then it'll all become two reps. At you know what, what I mean? level, sorry to interrupt you. At what level do you think that you would be able to do a set of two after how many sets of one with how much rest? Uh, I reckon 15, 12 to 15 sets of one with one, one and a half minute rest one was when I could, yeah. One just one set of two or consecutive sets of two? Consec oh, a few, a couple sets of two reps. And, yeah. uh, cup, and then after that, you would do sets of one until, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Until yeah. you can do and all then, sets of two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the thing is that it's not really, 
about like, I want to do everything sets of two or everything sets of one. I just need to do more work than I did last week or, you know, last session. I'm just trying to tiny, you know, tiny increments. Yeah. Work harder much... each week. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. I like it. So the same question, but for, you know, reverse, how would you go from zero to the full plan? Uh, full planche. How would I do that? Handstand push-ups would be and dip handstand push-ups dips, but there are two types of dips. I'll focus on weighted dips, the regular ones, and then it would be hollow body, um, straight body dips with forward mm -hmm. lean. Those were the two or three exercises that I I always got my uh, beginner students to do, and that got them to oh, at a certain level, like you know wall handstand push-ups. They could do, oh, I think it was like five to ten second advanced tuck after about two months or so which is pretty good like you know yeah. coming from you start you see a lot of guys that don't even have you know a, a tuck planche and then they're just attempting it for months and months and like bro this skill takes two years three years four years i'm like yeah. it does if you don't do it right if you don't have the basics <laughs> explain them explain them bro and then yeah so i'd have handstand push-ups down half start off with half rom do pike if you need to at the beginning build up to you know reps of you know, five full ROM and that's pretty, that's already a pretty good level. Like, you know, five to 10 full ROM, like, you know, that's, that's pretty tough in itself. So even with people who can already full planche. So yeah, that would be the, um, the starting point. Right. And then the interesting thing about progressions is that I still think you should spend most of your time just yeah mastering the basics and then you can start, you know, playing with light bands and stuff once you have that you know solid advanced talk but that's like yeah that's a i guess a longer conversation but mm. that's where i would start okay. okay so how would you build up from advanced talk to the straddle i'll just keep grinding those handstand push-ups and like you can you don't need to do all these dynamics where it's like you know advanced talk to straddle and then you go back and then you know there's reps mm. like that this yeah there's so many things that you don't really need to do just focus on the basics get stupid strong at them and then you know then that's when i think when you're really close to the skill that's when light bands and progressions are helpful that you can use them because like it's not every skill you can just do basics and then bang you got the skill straight away like yeah. you know with gloves front lever there is a bit of technique you know for a good one or two months but um that should be you know enough nice amazing Okay, so another question about handstand push-ups. What do you think about comparison of handstand push-ups and the military press? If someone for some reason can do handstand push-ups, can he uh, change it with the military press? If he likes, yeah. Is there a difference? I think mm, there is a difference. Well, freestanding or wall-assisted handstand wall push-ups? Wall-assisted. Wall-assisted. You know, I think it's, it's, I mean, I like doing military press more than handstand push-ups because yeah. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not too much, you see my videos, I don't do handstand too often. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I, I guess it's really just, um, yeah, up to, up to the individual, but Reference. yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough to say. I like, yeah, I just like doing military press more. See what you like better. It depends, yeah, if you're doing it full planche, I think doing handstand push-ups is a better idea. Yeah, because then course. you can have the skill of lowering into planche or yeah. you become more comfortable. Yeah. Of course, so for planche, if that's your goal, that's your focus. Yeah, and then do Agreed. Agreed. So another question. How often should you would you train for calisthenic skills, you know, planche, front lever? What what does the training frequency depend on? Intensity and volume. So I would recommend training. Iron Cross, Maltese, Victorian, anything that puts a lot of stress on your tendons um, twice a week. Front lever, for example, I think responds and pull-ups respond very well to higher frequency. Um, yeah, that's that's my experience. Like I did, I always did two times a week from the very beginning. I tried dabbling with three times a week. I could, you know, I could kind of do a light session, but I always find I wasn't recovered enough for the, the you know, the second session later in the week or the third. Yeah. Um, 
some people just like to train more often. So obviously they would have to do it less intense, less, less volume. Yeah. So it is kind of a preference there. Yeah. So rings, heavy stuff, twice per week, front lever, yep. planches, handstand push-ups, pull-ups, more, three, four, how many? Well, I'll say front lever. I think front lever a minimum of like three, three to four times a week. It really, well, I responded extremely well to doing it like very often. Like Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, exactly. It um, was a sweet spot. Sweet spot, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's tough to say. I feel like when you do only two times per week for the front lever, you really have to do a ton of volume, you know? You just do, a ton. yeah. Yeah, just a ton. And it's better to just be very specific, train the pulls, 15 to 20 reps per session, three times per week, four maybe, and that's it. Yep, you know? well, I agree with that, yeah. Um, okay, what do you think about short rest versus, versus long rest? Oh, I, at the beginning, I always started off with long rest. Three to five minutes was the um, was my protocol. Then I changed it um, to one and a half minute rest to maximum two minutes. And that was that was because I, well, I wanted my workouts to be shorter. But then I discovered cluster sets, which is like, you know, this is a you, you can do. I like doing like singles. But like, if you think about doing singles with a lot, like five minutes rest, how are you going to get through five sets? It's 25 minutes gone. Yeah. So, <laughs> and if you want to do more than, you know, two or three exercises, then, you know, you're going to need to yeah, shorten the rest. So yeah, that's what I did. I, when I started rings in 2021, or I restarted it. I changed it to about one and a half minute rest. Front lever. I never rested more than two minutes is always less than a minute, a minute or less. Um, oh yeah, it's really, it really depends. I think you can do a day where you're maximal strength, three minutes rest or so. And then the next day would be EMOM mm -hmm. or every minute on the minute. Yeah. As like your endurance or stamina day. And that's when you would rest less. So okay. it's, it's, a, again, it's a preference, but I think for skills, like some skills, I think you need, um, well, actually it's a good question because in competitions, you have to have stamina. So you need EMOM, you need that endurance. Yeah. So I think it's more, almost more important yeah, than just brute strength. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. I, I agree. I agree. But let's say you had all the time in the world. You have no responsibilities. You're an average 16 year old living with his parents. <laughs> Would you rest for three or five minutes then? It, it really depends. I think I would rest. Uh, I'd say less, less time. Yeah, less, less. Well, it, do, it think... depends again. Maximal strength, you need more rest. Yeah, but you could still make great progress, you know, with less rest. So but why not do? Let's say, let's say you cannot do much volume with short rest, but you can do more if you rest longer. Do you think you should take longer rest so you can do more volume, or vo more volume is not always better? You get. You just need to do enough volume that you did more than last week's work so yeah. that's all it comes down to at the end of the day yeah just slightly better each week just slightly better yeah slightly how you ever you do that is up to you but you know that's that's what it comes down to yeah okay and when would you use emom training when i want to improve my stamina for a skill so front lever for example if okay this is a good example if you're doing front lever pull-ups and you you say so you always resting three minutes, three or four minutes, five minutes, whatever. Try do a try watch your reps decrease. So go do a set your maximal reps. Rest a minute, do it again, do it again. You go from like say five is your maximum down to two, down to two, down to one, one. You'll just drop off because you have zero stamina. And if you, you need stamina, if you want to do combos, right, which is a big thing in calisthenics, right. So yeah, I think, I like yeah, I'd be and, doing a lot more than I would have at the beginning. Yeah. And on the other hand, when would you use cluster sets and what's the difference between clusters and EMOM? What are the benefits of, you know, compare them? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, well, EMOM is kind of just, oh, EMOM, you know, you're doing performing every time it hits a new minute. 
Uh, uh, cluster sets you can manipulate to doing every minute. You can do it every 15 seconds, every 30 seconds. So it's just condensed more cluster sets. You can do both. You can do either. It's hard. I, I'm not really sure on the answer um, why you would do one over the other. Maybe it's just another form of progression. Yeah. Yeah, pretty similar, pretty similar. Yeah. Pretty similar, it's just yeah, t slightly different rest period, pretty much. Yeah, the point yeah. is to make your work d dense, really dense, you know. Yeah, and to be so able to perform more than you would have if you're just doing straight sets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, this one is very interesting, actually. Uh, what is your opinion and your experience about greasing the groove? And do you think that it's better than just doing normal, normal sets? Well, okay. Number one thing is it depends on the exercise. So you're not going to be doing Maltese press, greasing the groove. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, you, you got food in your stomach. You're going out, you know, like, come on. You know, no one's that good, I hope. Um, <laughs> you're not doing it with Zanetti. You're not doing it with Victorian, you know. Yeah. You have to be in quarantine, maybe. Um, but it, it, it for very simple movements like front lever, front lever pull-ups, regular pull-ups handstand push-ups it can be good but another thing is that you should only do it with one exercise i think one or two because i mean the whole point is to be fresh isn't it when you're doing it and how can you be fresh if you want to practice multiple times throughout the day um you know with multiple yeah multiple exercises but my experience with it was very very good with front lever like it's like my whole video dedicated with a february to may the most yeah ridiculous progress that i've ever had um, and it was better than the first time that I did it, which was like a uh, couple few years earlier, 2018, I think it was. Um, yeah, the second time around it was much better for me. Um, How did yeah. you do it? What was the template? The template for well, this time, it was five <laughs> times a week. I mixed, or oh, EMOM was the new thing as well. So I had small EMOM sessions along with um, greasing the groove. So maybe I'll do like a five or 10 sets of um, you know, five, 10 uh, minute EMOM. And I might do that three times spaced out. So like from 5 PM, 7 PM, 9 PM, you know, I'll do like little EMOM sessions, very small and very light. So it's a kind of like EMOM greasing the groove thing. Yeah. And then I did another day, which was, I was doing weighted sets and reps normal. And then I was also doing, um, combos. Yeah. So, which is similar to what, uh, Evo or Ivo Panicchioni, he did. Mm. Yeah, the simple structure. Yeah. Next question. Oh, very interesting. Can you build strength without hypertrophy? Because you see a lot of guys saying it's the same thing. A lot of guys saying it's not the same thing. So, what do you think about that? Uh, well, they're not. I wouldn't say they're the same thing. But the the thing is that you can build a lot of strength with the muscle that you already have for quite a long time before it's absolutely necessary to add more muscle mass to increase your strength. Um, okay. That would, yeah, that's the, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I, you know, I never dedicated time to building muscle um, specifically to increase my strength as I was doing my calisthenic skills. I think it's a little bit different in that unless you're a really skinny dude with like no muscle on you, then I would consider putting down the skills and stuff and like, doing the basics and building up some muscle mass for, you know, six months to a year. And then you, with all that new muscle mass, you could spend a, two years at least before, um, you know, you need to consider adding some, you know, more muscle to your frame over okay. the skills. Yeah. Nice. Agree. Agree. Uh, your thoughts on specificity without prerequisites. So you see that. Yeah. <laughs> See that's very often. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't exist. <laughs> there's no. I don't think there's think any. It does. People do it. You know. Well, can you give an example? Somebody who holds front lever for three seconds starts learning front lever pull ups. You know, he does bands. He does tuck front lever tuck front lever pull ups. He does every exercise known to man for the front lever pull up instead of just building up his prerequisites. Oh, my question is why, like. I think it's an ego thing with like a lot of people like they're, they're just like, oh, I don't know what it's, it is, but they can't, it's they can't like, oh, I don't know about that. Like specificity with doing tuck. It's like, why can't you do tuck? I'm sorry. Why are you doing tuck and why are you not doing a harder progression? 
It's because your prerequisites are not good enough. Why are your prerequisites not good enough? It's because you haven't bothered to put in enough time to take, you know, to, you know, follow the, the steps. So I, I just think, I mean, I did progressions for a bit and then I, yeah, as I grew <laughs> in my calisthenics oh. journey, I was like, wow, you know, they were definitely right that you need to, you know, you need to follow the elements step by step and not like cutting corners with the giant bands, you know, with the, with a tuck, fully tucked planche, all those little variations. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Can you unlock skills without specificity? So for example, you know, planches, front levers, Maltesers, iron crosses. I think you already answered that a little bit, but yeah. Can you go a little well, bit some... Yeah, well, some skills like um, uh, like some of the skills are just brute strength, which require little to no technique. Front lever is kind of one of them, like just a static front lever. Maybe the front lever pull-ups, the full ROM are a little bit different. Um, like a touch, for example, I think is different. You have that's like that's um specific strength that's required. Um, Maltese is an interesting one because I think you can actually get Maltese more or less for free, just from mastering supinated plunge and back lever curls. Mm. That's more than enough bicep preparation. And if you look at Carlo, Figus, Nathan, um, OTZ, all those guys, they had ridiculous um, back lever curls and they got their multis in very, very little time. You know, that's logic, yeah. that's logic. But when I say that on YouTube, people attack me, you know, like crazy. You know, Bashmakov actually told me he did that as well. Yeah. He he, he um just did planche and back lever curls in very, very little time. Obviously, like you can spend a month or two to do your specific little drills. But I mean, if you're strong enough to, to do the skill, you're strong enough to do the skill. Yeah. Um, however you do that, if it's through you know, through the whale bands for, for a whole year, or if it's just through training, you know, other skills that relate to it. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, bands or progressions, which one to do? Progressions, you mean like tuck? Or are you talking uh, about progressions as like a skill to skill? Tuck, planche, advanced tuck, straddle, half lay, pull, or going from a giant band all the way down to body weight. Hmm. Yeah, I don't recommend giant band at all. I only recommend light band, yeah. And that's because one one key, key thing is that you can spend um, you know, and there's so many examples of people posting their you know reverse planche with a giant band, and then they just vanish. You never see anything from them again. You only see that um, you know that that video from a year ago with the giant band or the Victorian on the rings with the giant band. Like you never see it come to fruition. It never comes alive. Um, so, I, and then you see all the guys who follow the progressions, like, you know, front lever pull-ups, P-bar, Vic, whatever. Most of them end up, um, you know, with a result to show for themselves. And the other thing is that you can have much more fun doing other skills that will progress you to that goal without using bands. Because, like, if you're just spending a whole year using bands for planche, you could be doing your front lever, you could be doing your handstand push-ups, deep, 90-degree handstand push-ups. You know, you can play with it, with your whole body weight. But if you're just doing a little, you know, five second um, tuck planches with a giant band, a whole year will go by and you'll be very, um, you know, demotivated, I think. So yeah. you don't like, you don't like any band other than the light ones? Light ones are very good. Like, yeah. But the, again, only when you're close to the real skill. Yeah. That's my experience. Why is that? Because you're so close to the real thing that it doesn't, like, as soon as you take off a band that's so heavy for you, you meet it's like i don't know if it's some something to do with your brain you're just like wow i am so not ready for that for sure yeah but when, yeah but when you use a um a light band you're you, you know you're mimicking the movement and you're so close to it that yeah yeah just, yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah i know i know i experienced that <laughs> so the question is are there actually any good ways to use a heavy band for calisthenics Mm, okay. I when think... I say heavy band, I mean fifteen or more kilograms of assistance. Okay. Um. I don't. I can't. I can't think of any. No. Maybe warming up. 
and then <laughs> but then you use the light band as well yeah. unless you wanted to start doing your working sets with a heavy band yeah. no no we don't <laughs> no yeah you're nice so i wouldn't say so. good question good answer good answer uh so how to correctly use the bands how would you use a band to unlock a skill um so if i can do that skill for one rep or i can hold it for maximum five seconds right body weight then i would use the band i would give myself permission to use the band and i would do that after my working set so at the beginning i would do a couple of attempts of the skill or the, you know the best progression that i can do you know whether it's negatives an isometric or maybe i'll do negatives first first body weight then an isometric body weight then i'll do um use the bands to you know mm. build up the volume um or i just don't use the bands yeah but how much volume do you generally gen generally need how much volume would you generally need no, yeah for in terms of seconds oh using the band okay oh. i think it's different because i think it's different for different skills because iron cross for example you can hold for 30 seconds or more, right? Like people can actually do that with their body weight, but nobody really doing that with Maltese or Victorian. So it, it depends, but I'll shoot for anywhere between five and 10 seconds for most skills. Yeah. But then again, if like the harder skills, you can do a bit less like Maltese and uh, it, it depends. Five or 10 seconds total volume. Oh no, sorry, per set. Per set, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, for whole volume, isometric wise, with the band, um, I guess it would be the same without the band, which would be anywhere from like thirty seconds to a minute. Yeah, that would be the total isometric volume I would do. Thirty seconds to a minute. Okay. Yeah. So for like, basically for harder skills, you would do less total volume because they are they are harder basically. Yeah, and because I'm close to my body weight as well. Yeah. I'm not yeah. just spamming the giant band. Yeah, ten second big. Yeah. Would you use more bands for rings than for the front lever or the planche? Yeah, I think I think bands go really well with the rings, because um, it's such a uh, it's there's so much stress on the rings that I feel like using bands uh, yeah alleviates it in a way that it, you, you don't necessarily need with front lever or yeah front lever or the the basic you know bar movement bar calisthenics movements. Um, yeah, but they're very specific, you know, like mm -hmm. Iron Cross, Maltese, Victorian. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. How important is diet for calisthenics skills? Because I think it's the second half of it. You know, staying it's light. The, sorry? It's the second, second half. half. Yeah. Staying light, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Well, yeah. You need to obviously be light. Um, I don't know too many calisthenics dudes who have a diet. I think everyone just wings it and hope they stay a bit light. Yeah. I never thought about diet at all, but I understand yeah, it is really important. One big thing is that, yeah, fasting is a good thing before your, um, your training. So, you know, staying light, you don't want to have you know, food in your stomach, digesting, spending energy while you're trying to train. I think, you know, it puts you in a sleepy state. So I think, yeah, before your session, you want to be light, you know, obviously you just want to be healthy in general, cut the crap from your diet that's pretty much yeah pretty so much were you always fasted before your trainings or most of the time what most did you found yeah. that worked the best you know being fasted having some little food in, in your in your system or what uh i'd have uh, i'd have like a banana and then that's pretty much it and then i'd go train or something I'd have something very very light and then i'd go train and then have my big meal after but um yeah i could never train on it you know on it um full stomach or even yeah, with food i definitely when i had processed food like you know yeah, just shit food obviously it does definitely affect your performance so i mean just in general in your for your life you want to cut the crap out and you should be good you should be lean healthy strong and you're good to go so the last question is uh because we have one more minute left <laughs> so what is david doing right now K training wise uh general in general general i'm Right now, I just relocated to a, a mining town in Kalgoorlie and I'm doing my finishing off my engineering degree and working full time seven days on, seven days off. And yeah, on my off days, I'm you know hitting the calisthenics gym and 
yeah, doing what I can to to make a comeback. <laughs> yeah, Are you gonna make skill. a comeback? I'll try. I'll try my best. Yeah. Which one is that? What's Which what? comeback? <laughs> comeback number ten. <laughs> number ten. <laughs> still, still a rookie numbers, man. Rookie number. <laughs> Elias has it. way more than me. <laughs> way more than you. <laughs> well, Elias is gonna come back too. Maybe you can yeah. compete. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. What do you think is the best rep max percentage? Generally, the range for training, yeah. you know, for safe training, and how does it? Uh, how is it different between different skills? You know, planche, front lever, rings. Uh planche, front lever. I think around 85 to 90 percent. So your four, your three to four or five rep max around is kind of the best. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends again, like what you're if it's just pure strength or for your EMOM sets or whatever, whatever you're doing around that range is pretty good. But then again, you can go, you know, lighter for, um, you know, for other purposes like stamina or endurance or whatever you're doing. But I think around, yeah, 85 to 90 percent. Um, do you believe in like um, light training sessions, you know, with heavier bands, let's say, would that be useful or just, you know, just rest? Uh, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do those light sessions with the heavy band. Like there are like, you know, technique sessions. Um, I never really did them. I gave it a shot, but yeah, I did feel like it was kind of a waste of um, energy. If I was just itching to train and I was like, oh man, I really don't have the energy. I didn't sleep very well. So I don't want to do the full session. I'll do it tomorrow. Then maybe I'll just do, you know, some, some very light stuff, just some, yeah, some push ups, pull ups, maybe pumping the dumbbell presses, you know, something like that, just to do something. But I wouldn't do like a full, full light sesh with the big bands mm. for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't think it's, there's too much gain from it. You know, yeah. Personally. Some people, some people say that um, heavy bands are great for um, mind muscle connection. On the other hand, you have you have told me that heavy bands create create a false sense of progress. Yeah. yeah exactly. So what That's is it between that two, those two? False sense of progress or positive mind muscle connection? Or is it both? I think one of them is disconnected from reality and the other is slightly <laughs> less. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. I love it. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I can't see any reason. I've, I've tried it in the past and I just got no benefit from it. I've seen other people try it with, you know, varying success that I was just like, yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. Me. I love it, man. Nice. <laughs> Which one though? <laughs> Which one? No light, no light. But no, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't do the heavy bands for light days. So you don't, you don't believe in uh, mind muscle connection. <laughs> it's different. It's different between like doing um mind muscle connection with a big band, just repping it out, and mind muscle connection actually doing you know doing the skill. Well, I, that's an interesting thing. Mind muscle connection with a skill. You don't, do you, when you do a skill, are you thinking about mind muscle connection when you're actually doing it with your body weight? Never. You're just doing the skill. Like it's second nature, right? You're just hopping into it. You're doing it. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, man. Uh, when I, I imagine myself doing it bef before I do it, especially when I need to break a PR, especially. Yeah. Like when I need to hold Maltese for 18 seconds and the last time I did 15. It's yeah. going to be hard, you know, you need to imagine it. You need to picture yourself in that position. Imagine all the muscles that are that will work. Yeah. But I don't think it's very important. I don't know. Maybe you have a different opinion. Well, that's pretty much the same as, as me. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did. I made yeah. myself do it and not do it. And just muscle memory. I mean, just go in and do it. I wouldn't be like thinking, oh, I'm doing my muscle connection while I'm, <laughs> while I'm like, I don't know. I'm warming up with a band and you're feeling it. I mean, this is warming up. Yeah. I'm not really thinking heavy band day, my muscle connection. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, the ju just reality. We are just real. <laughs> okay, nice. Right, I love it. So, um, but uh, what I want to say is for different skills, some may maybe something that you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that you can just change it with your mindset? Like, do you believe in like mindset? If I believe it, I can I can achieve it. You know, if I don't believe it, there's no way I can achieve it. What do you think about that? Uh, or I mean, it, it just... never, it yeah, never, for, um, yeah, it never hurts to have a, a positive mindset. But yeah, I mean, there's obviously a point a point of delusion, and you know, there's like a, there's a whole there's like levels to it. You know, like imagine yourself doing it. I'm gonna do it. You do it. You make progress towards it. But you're not just gonna be like, okay, I can't do a front or I can't do a front lever pull up I'm gonna do five right now let's do this you, it's not gonna happen you're not gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna do it and everyone's gonna record it and laugh at you no um yeah so I obviously it doesn't hurt to have a good you know good uh, positive outlook but yeah obviously you gotta scale it back how would you explain uh Elias Elias is crazy you know Elias right Elias Page Elias Page crazy yeah his comeback he he got he goes from tuck front lever to front lever pull-ups in two weeks yeah oh, well that's interesting i mean that's that's again that's like for me i, I can only speak to my experience is like i didn't do a maltese or any rings for four months more than four months and i could i could actually do it like barely lean into it and then I held it for like five seconds. I was like, wow, I could still do a Maltese after all that time off. And then the next session, or then after that, I used a band because I couldn't do it again. And then um, was it like a week later? Just doubled again, that my level doubled. It's just all that muscle memory coming, yeah, coming back to you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I guess it's just muscle memory. It's not him going just through the power of his brain because he's already done all the sets and hours and reps, you know, in the past it's just coming back to him it's not him just going you know he does got his power he does a lot of drop sets do you know what that is in terms of skill? Elias does drop sets yeah oh that's cool no I, I mean i know what it is but i never i never did it i did it and i didn't see really much results you know for example you do maltese whatever skill you start with yeah. body weight or the light band once you can't hold it, you just increase the bands you know, until you're doing with with the really thick one. It's very, very exhausting. Yeah, it is. What do you think yeah. about that? I, it, I would rather... Um, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't, I don't think I would like to do that with yeah, more and more bands and bands. I could maybe see the benefit if you already can do the skill body weight. Or yeah. if you're, or you you know you're doing your yeah, body weight and then with a light band like weighted like lightweight body weight then a light band. But if you can't do the skill that you're going for, and then you're chucking on you know starting with a big a medium band or whatever, then you're going to meet you know medium heavy ultra heavy. Uh, well, I I don't think yeah you got to get the skill first. Then you can worry about improving with your endurance with drop sets and stuff. You got to get the strength first. Would you increase in endurance with drop sets or just progressive overload and more sets with just regular sets, you know? Would I increase my endurance with that? Decreasing the rest. Uh, was it sorry, to increase my endurance? That's the goal you're saying? Yeah, let's say you can do Maltese for five seconds. Would you do yeah. it like drop sets or just like... Uh, regular sets and just decreasing rest, you know, basic progressive overload. What would you rather do? Uh, I'll decrease my rest. Yeah. I wouldn't be worrying about um, drop sets. I don't think drop sets are too, would be too good until you're really damn good at the skill. Like you're chilling in it. Like, you know, but there's no tomorrow. You just, you know, yeah. just chilling. But yeah, if you're really struggling with the skill, just stick with your straight sets or Imam, whatever. And then, um, yeah, I mean, you, you can do it. Yeah. Or go for it. But, I personally wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't do the drop sets right away. Yeah, you are. I see that you're really against uh, the heavy bands, the same as me. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I have so many, so much experience with the heavy bands I, and I've seen, I've seen it so, time and time again, where they get sucked into the, the abyss of the, <laughs> of the giant, of the giant bands. Uh-huh. They're like, they're like, come here, come here. You can do the skill. I can let you feel what it's like. And then you rip that band away and you're like, uh, help me. <laughs> I can't do anything. And then it's like, yeah, it is a, the false sense where it's like, um, no, I can't. Sorry. It's like, you want to go work out? You want to go train? Like, yeah, sure. But let me just bring my big band, um, you know, band of bands. Otherwise I can't train with you. Otherwise I can't do any of the skills, you know? <laughs> it is kind of funny when you think about it like that. You need yeah. your giant bands to, you, you become so dependent on them as well. Especially if you do them all the time, you, you come separate from, it's like it's two identities. One's like you with your body weight. Another one is you with your giant bands. This one feels better. So, you, you know, you put it forward. Yeah. Okay, okay, but what do you think about doing progressive progressive overload with the band, with the heavy band? So actually making progress with the heavy band until you can go to the a little bit lighter one. Is that think, unnecessary? Yeah, it's un. Well, I mean, okay. Let me let me ask you this: If you okay, so there's two people. One is following the skill progression, where he's going from one skill progressively leading to the hardest skill and there's another guy who is just going for the hardest skill straight away for one whole year right all you're going to see from this guy on the right with the um uh left with the big bands you're just going to watch him on the bands just doing that skill making the tiniest tiniest bit of progress after all this time and then you're going to see the other guy who's playing you know say, say, say the skill is victorian this guy's going to be doing all these front lever combos. He's going to be doing all these Vic presses on P bars, whatever. And then you see the other guy, you know, still doing his Vic on rings with a tiny bit less percentage of the band, you know, and a whole year's gone by and that's all you have to show. Hmm. And then you realize as soon as you get off the, the, um, you know, off the band or whatever, you can't do any other skills. Like it's better to, yeah, focus on building the, the prerequisite skills, have fun with them, Get them to body weight or weighted, and then add in the um, you know, the the final hard skill, or whatever. Don't just jump straight to it with a giant band, and become trapped, you know, mm-hmm. trapped in that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I totally agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about? I'm just basically coming coming back to the questions and just filling them up. You know, mm-hmm. I will I will just edit it into them later. Sure. So just. Yeah. Um, do you think you can unlock an iron cross with just front lever, planche, and that's it? Oh, yes, but it might, then again, it might be a two second high cross. So you might be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And you might need that extra bit of specificity to go here. Right. Yeah. But you pretty much, you pretty much have it, don't you? Like you can i think it's very good to yeah get good at the previous skills have fun with them get to a good level play with them you know have fun with your calisthenics and then start the light bands or whatever to or light medium band to get the um the skill down properly um, but you can pretty much unlock almost any skill um you know without directly training for it yeah yeah that's what i was talking about yeah. that's what i wanted to ask you know um so yeah, do you think that uh, is it's better to actually achieve those easier skills first, like planche, front lever? Uh, even if your end goal is the iron cross, do you think it's going to be faster if you achieve front lever and planche, fir- planche first, or just doing Boy. the accessories for the iron cross right from the start? What do you think is better if your end goal is just the iron cross? Hmm. Uh, it's probably better, yeah, to do your basics and just the iron cross work. Yeah, if you're so fixated on that um on that goal, which no no one ever is, like maybe yeah. you're that one percent, zero point one percent. But after you get that skill, you're gonna go for another one. You want for another one, and you'll find that th- some skills are better to learn before others, because there's like a there's like a pattern or like a, a network that you know one leads to the next, blah blah blah. Rather than jump into this one, then can you explain that network? How would you or the start whole, that tree? The tree, okay. Yeah. We all know how it starts from pull-ups, dips, handstand push-ups, push-ups, 
mostly pushing there. Um, yeah, your pull-ups are your fundamental pulling movement. Then you'd go to front lever. Then you go to front lever pull-ups. Then you might go to p bar uh, p bar vic. Then vic on rings. That's a hot, that's a that's a gap that is ideally you'd use bands. Um, then you already have a very you'd already have a very good open cross. If you just went straight from um, uh, p bar vic to uh, like or rings vic when you're in that progression stage going from one to you know that that little gap p bar vic to rings vic you probably have enough pull strength to where your um your your cross is quite open the other, the other side the push side you'd go obviously planche or planche yeah planche would be the the big one then multis planche multis oh i forgot back lever for pulling back lever. see it's how yeah, back leaving is a uh, is a back lever of curls. Her festo is a pulling movement, but your body's prone, like in um, uh, Maltese, right? Yeah. But Maltese is obviously a mix of push and pull. So that's when it becomes like, wow, you realize like a lot of these calisthenics moves are actually pulling, crying cross, pulling yourself up. But then it uses um, you know, contradicting muscles where it's like it's using your lats and it's using your you know your your front delts and it's like it's using all these things where it's not so push and pull yeah you know what i mean it becomes like very like crisscrossy everywhere um so i would i would take my time pretty much following the code of points the gymnastics code of points mm. yeah uh, I, i'm not so sure about that like pretty much like yeah if you don't get into like the very specifics but generally it's a pretty half it's a half decent um approach to get you yeah 